William Kingdon Clifford William Kingdon Clifford FRS, May 4, 1845, March 3, 1879, was an English mathematician and philosopher. Building on the work of Hermann Grassmann, he introduced what is now termed geometric algebra, a special case of the Clifford algebra named in his honor. The operations of geometric algebra have the effect of mirroring, rotating, translating, and mapping the geometric objects that are being modeled to new positions. Clifford algebras in general and geometric algebra in particular have been of ever-increasing importance to mathematical physics, geometry, and computing. Clifford was the first to suggest that gravitation might be a manifestation of an underlying geometry. In his philosophical writings he coined the expression mind stuff. Biography Born at Exeter, William Clifford showed great promise at school. He went on to King's College London, at age 15, and Trinity College, Cambridge where he was elected fellow in 1868, after being second wrangler in 1867 and second Smith Prizeman. Being second was a fate he shared with others who became famous mathematicians, including William Thomson, Lord Kelvin, and James Clerk Maxwell. In 1870, he was part of an expedition to Italy to observe the solar eclipse of December 22, 1870. During that voyage he survived a shipwreck along the Sicilian coast. In 1871, he was appointed Professor of Mathematics and Mechanics at University College London, and in 1874 became a Fellow of the Royal Society. He was also a member of the London Mathematical Society and the Metaphysical Society. On April 7, 1875 Clifford married Lucy Lane. In 1876, Clifford suffered a breakdown, probably brought on by overwork. He taught and administered by day, and wrote by night. A half-year holiday in Algeria and Spain allowed him to resume his duties for 18 months after which he collapsed again. He went to the island of Madeira to recover, but died there of tuberculosis after a few months, leaving a widow with two children. Clifford enjoyed entertaining children and wrote a collection of fairy stories, The Little People. Clifford and his wife are buried in London's Highgate Cemetery just north of the grave of Karl Marx, and near the graves of George Eliot and Herbert Spencer. Mathematician Clifford was above all and before all a geometer. H. J. S. Smith the discovery of non-Euclidean geometry opened new possibilities in geometry in Clifford's era. The field of intrinsic differential geometry was born, with the concept of curvature broadly applied to space itself as well as to curved lines and surfaces. Clifford was very much impressed by Bernhard Riemann's 1854 essay on the hypotheses which lie at the bases of geometry. In 1870 he reported to the Cambridge Philosophical Society on the curved space concepts of Riemann and included speculation on the bending of space by gravity. Clifford's translation of Riemann's paper was published in Nature in 1873. His report at Cambridge, on the space theory of matter, was published in 1876, anticipating Albert Einstein's general relativity by 40 years. Clifford elaborated elliptic space geometry as a non-Euclidean metric space. Equidistant curves in elliptic space are now said to be Clifford parallels. Clifford's contemporaries considered him acute and original, witty and warm. He often worked late into the night, which may have hastened his death. He published papers on a range of topics including algebraic forms and projective geometry in the textbook Elements of Dynamic. His application of graph theory to invariant theory was followed up by William Spottiswood and Alfred Kemp. Algebras In 1878 Clifford published a seminal work, building on Grassmann's extensive algebra. He had succeeded in unifying the quaternions, developed by William Rowan Hamilton, with Grassmann's outer product also known as the exterior product. He understood the geometric nature of Grassmann's creation, and that the quaternions fit cleanly into the algebra Grassmann had developed. The versors in quaternions facilitate representation of rotation. Clifford laid the foundation for a geometric product, composed of the sum of the inner product and Grassmann's outer product. The geometric product was eventually formalized by the Hungarian mathematician Marcel Ries. The inner product equips geometric algebra with a metric fully incorporating distance and angle relationships for lines, planes, and volumes, while the outer product gives those planes and volumes vector-like properties, including a directional bias. Combining the two brought the operation of division into play. This greatly expanded our qualitative understanding of how objects interact in space. Crucially, it also provided the means for quantitatively calculating the spatial consequences of those interactions. The resulting geometric algebra, as he called it, eventually realized the long-sought goal of creating an algebra that mirrors the movements and projections of objects in three-dimensional space. Moreover, Clifford's algebraic schema extends to higher dimensions. 
The algebraic operations have the same symbolic form as they do in two or three dimensions. The importance of general Clifford algebras has grown over time, while their isomorphism classes, as real algebras, have been identified in other mathematical systems beyond simply the quaternions. Dot. The realms of real analysis and complex analysis have been expanded through the algebra H of quaternions, thanks to its notion of a three-dimensional sphere embedded in a four-dimensional space. Quaternion versors, which inhabit this three-sphere, provide a representation of the rotation group SO3. Clifford noted that Hamilton's biquaternions were a tensor product HC, backslash displaced tile H backslash O times C, of known algebras, and proposed instead two other tensor products of H. Clifford argued that the scalars taken from the complex number C might instead be taken from split complex numbers D or from the dual numbers N. In terms of tensor products, HD, backslash displaced tile H backslash O times D, produces split by quaternions, while HN, backslash displaced tile H backslash O times N, forms dual quaternions. The algebra of dual quaternions is used to express screw displacement, a common mapping in kinematics. Philosopher As a philosopher, Clifford's name is chiefly associated with two phrases of his coining, mind stuff and the tribal self. The former symbolizes his metaphysical conception, suggested to him by his reading of Spinoza. Sir Frederick Pollock wrote about Clifford as follows. Clifford himself defined mind stuff as follows, 1878, on the nature of things in themselves, mind, volume 3, number 9, pages 57 to 67. The other phrase, tribal self, gives the key to Clifford's ethical view which explains conscience and the moral law by the development in each individual of a self, which prescribes the conduct conducive to the welfare of the tribe. Much of Clifford's contemporary prominence was due to his attitude toward religion. Animated by an intense love of his conception of truth and devotion to public duty, he waged war on such ecclesiastical systems as seemed to him to favor obscurantism, and to put the claims of sect above those of human society. The alarm was greater, as theology was still unreconciled with Darwinism, and Clifford was regarded as a dangerous champion of the anti-spiritual tendencies then imputed to modern science. There has also been debate on the extent to which Clifford's doctrine of concomitance or psychophysical parallelism influenced John Hewling's Jackson's model of the nervous system and through him the work of Janet, Freud, Rebo, and A. Ethics In his essay, The Ethics of Belief published in 1877, Clifford argued that it was immoral to believe things for which one lacks evidence. He describes a shipowner who planned to send to sea an old and not well-built ship full of passengers. The shipowner had doubts suggested to him that the ship might not be seaworthy. These doubts preyed upon his mind, and made him unhappy. He considered having the ship refitted even though it would be expensive. At last, he succeeded in overcoming these melancholy reflections. He watched the ship depart, with a light heart. And he got his insurance money when she went down in mid-ocean and told no tales. Clifford argued that the ship owner was guilty of the deaths of the passengers even though he sincerely believed the ship was sound. He had no right to believe on such evidence as was before him. The italics are in the original, Clifford famously concludes, it is wrong always, everywhere, and for anyone, to believe anything upon insufficient evidence. As such, he was arguing in direct opposition to religious thinkers for whom blind faith, i.e. belief in things in spite of the lack of evidence for them, was a virtue. This paper was famously attacked by pragmatist philosopher William James in his Will to Believe lecture. Often these two works are read and published together as touchstones for the debate over evidentialism, faith, and over-belief. Premonition of Relativity Though Clifford never constructed a full theory of space-time and relativity, there are some remarkable observations he made in print that foreshadow these modern concepts, in his book Elements of Dynamic, 1878, he introduced quasi-harmonic motion in a hyperbola. He wrote an expression for a parametrized unit hyperbola, which other authors later used as a model for relativistic velocity. Died elsewhere he states. This passage makes reference to biquaternions, though Clifford made these into split biquaternions as his independent development. The book continues with a chapter on the bending of space, the substance of general relativity. Clifford also discussed his views in On the Space Theory of Matter in 1876. In 1910 William Barrett Franklin quoted the space theory of matter in his book on parallelism. He wrote, Years later, after general relativity had been advanced by Albert Einstein, various authors noted that Clifford had anticipated Einstein. In 1923 Hermann Weyl mentioned Clifford as one of those who, like Bernhard Riemann, anticipated the geometric ideas of relativity. In 1940 Eric Temple Bell published his The Development of Mathematics. 
There on pages 359 and 360 he discusses the prescience of Clifford on relativity. Also in 1960, at Stanford University for the International Congress for Logic, Methodology, and Philosophy of Science, John Archibald Wheeler introduced his geometrodynamics formulation of general relativity by crediting Clifford as the initiator. In his The Natural Philosophy of Time, 1961, 1980, Gerald James Whitrow recalls Clifford's prescience by quoting him to describe the friedman lemaitre robertson walker metric in cosmology, 1st ed. pages 246,7, 2nd ed. p. 291. In 1970 Cornelius Lanchoche summarizes Clifford's premonitions this way. In 1973 Banesh Hoffman wrote. In 1990 Ruth Farwell and Christopher Nee examined the record on acknowledgement of Clifford's foresight. They conclude it was Clifford, not Riemann who anticipated some of the conceptual ideas of general relativity. To explain the lack of recognition of Clifford's prescience, they point out that he was an expert in metric geometry, and metric geometry was too challenging to orthodox epistemology to be pursued. In 1992 Farwell and Nee continued their study with the geometric challenge of Riemann and Clifford they hold that once tensors had been used in the theory of general relativity, the framework existed in which a geometrical perspective in physics could be developed and allowed the challenging geometrical conceptions of Riemann and Clifford to be rediscovered. Dot selected writings legacy The academic journal advances in applied Clifford algebras publishes on Clifford's legacy in kinematics and abstract algebra. Quotations Kinematics and abstract algebra. Quotations in a matter.